Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to tie a, a pack of dub slow water caddis. One of my favorite flies. Uh, I'm sure somebody else has already tied something very similar, but I've never seen anything. So I kind of like to say that I, I invented this fly, but you know, probably not. Anyway, um, we'll start with, with getting our materials prepped. So one of the things that we're going to be using is a cul de canard. This is a, a large CDC fiber from the preen gland behind a, a Canadian goose. And I've got a, I've got a you know one inch square foam block that I've cut a slit in in this direction, and I've cut a slit in it in this direction. So I'm going to set it down, and I've got the got the slit facing up, and I'm going to take that CDC feather, and I'm going to push the stem right down into that slit, and it folds all those fibers together, and I'll just trim off the tip, and then trim off the butt end of the feather. There we go, we'll set that aside. I've got two CDC puffs. Really don't have to do a whole lot with these, but if they've got a little bit of a stem like this one does, you're going to want to trim out that stem just a, just a little bit. So we'll trim out just the very tip of it. So we get all those fiber, all those feather fibers folding together, like so. And I've got two of those. I'll lay those one on top of the other. So the next thing that we've got to do is create our wing. And this is just a Brahma hen cape. And I'm going to pick out a feather. And I want to kind of gauge it based on the size of the fly that I'm going to tie. And you want to start a little larger than you might think. And I like the ones with a little bit of a taper to the to the tip and not not so uh, squared off. Here's a good one right here. I'm going to pull that out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the fluff back away from the feather. There we go. And I'm going to take some of my head cement. And I just put some on my fingertip here. Ideally, you want to do you know a dozen or two dozen of these feathers at the same time all at once, so that uh, you know you don't have to keep putting glue on your fingers. And then I'm just going to uh, glue this feather together right here. And you can see as I'm pulling on it, I'm gluing those fibers together, and I'm getting the shape that I want. There we go. That ought to work. And we'll just set that over to dry. Now I've already done one to prepare for this video, so we'll go ahead and continue. All right, so the next thing that I've got to do is start my thread. I'm going to start it right at the eye. And I'm going to take the thread back to about the halfway point on the hook. And I'll break off the waste piece. And now I'm going to use uh, our pack -a dub uh, yarn. It's just a very fine yarn. Uh, several strands of, of even finer yarn put together or weaved together. I'll trim the edge so I got a nice clean tie-in point. When I tie this on I'm going to push it around to the side because I want to tie it on just like I would a rib and have it go underneath the hook shank. And I'm going to take that back to just just past the barb. And then I'll bring my thread forward up to the eye. I'm going to try and trap all this excess material down right here. And give it a push down. Makes it a little bit easier. There we go. So now I'm just going to kind of build the underbody with a few wraps of thread. And if you think about a caddis, they're larger near the near the back portion of the abdomen than they are near the uh, near the head and the thorax. So I'm going to build a little bit of a bump back here, a slowly tapering bump. There we go. And I'll just bring my thread forward. Put that in the bobbin cradle. Now I'm going to twist this because I also want to make it thin and tight so I can get some segmentations.
And then we're going to wrap that around the hook shank. There we go. Whoops. And we'll just take that up. So I'm making a nice tight body. I'm going to continue to wrap. As I get towards where it's going to start sloping down, I'm going to let it start unwrapping because I want it to get thinner. And I'm going to stop probably about two or three eye, eye lengths behind the hook eye and I'm going to tie off the body. Okay, so now we've got our nice tapered caddis body. And if you look, all these little furs, all these little hairs poking out, that really, really brings the, the material alive in the water. Okay, so now for our wing, I've got it prepped. I'm going to peel off these, these excess fluffy fibers. And I'm going to lay this right there. Okay, got my spot. I'm going to take the feather and I'm going to fold it right down the center. This is why you want to make sure that you do uh, a bunch of these prior to starting to tie because it's a very quick tie and you really got to make sure that these these uh, feathers are dry before you start folding them and pinching them otherwise they're going to stick together. Okay so now I've got my feather nice and tented. I'm going to go up here near the, the tip of the feather or for the down near the butt of the feather I should say. And I'm going to tie that in with a loose wrap, bring it up and snug tight, put a few nice tight wraps to hold it in place, and then trim off the stem. And I'm going to adjust my fly in the vise there, and I'm going to hold this as it's, being, as it's folded, and I'm going to trim it at an angle, just like a caddis wing. Now you can see the, the cat is starting to form. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So the next the next thing that I've got to do is I've got to uh, I've got to take my my block with the uh, with my cold canard in there and form a dubbing loop. So I've got a dubbing loop formed. I'm going to take, I just went to Staples and I got a little little clip like this. It's got a magnet on it. Come together nice and tight. And I'm going to grab a hold of those feathers, lift them off. And I'm going to take my scissors and trim out the stem. There we go. And I'm going to slide this right here in my dubbing loop. Move my clip, and I'm gonna just gently push those fibers forward. And now I want to trim the base of them so that they're kind of short. I don't want them really long. Get out any stray fibers there. So if you have a if you have a dubbing whorl, you could use that. Um, if you don't. Just use your whip finish tool, stick it in there to the first joint and just start to spin just like you would with dubbing. So essentially what we're doing is we're making a dubbing rope or a, a dubbing loop full of the, the CDC. We're going to use that for our hackle. Let it go. See it spins out nice. Get a few more twists in there. There we go. Now I just have to wrap this. Now as I wrap, I'm going to start to pull back on the fibers. Keep them pointed towards the back. And this is really where a, a rotary vise comes in handy. If you don't have a rotary vise, just do it hand over hand. Pass it from hand to hand. Just continue to pull everything back. Until you get up to the eye. There we go. Now to tie this off, I'm going to pull the, the dubbing loop straight up in the air, cross my uh, thread, bring that underneath, make a couple tight wraps on there. Now I can change hands. And we'll 
we'll trim out the dubbing loop. Peel everything back away from the eye. And tidy it up. Make that nice prominent black head. Now you want to make sure that you, your head's not too, too huge. Because although it's a prominent head, it's, it's not real large. It's just, it's just very noticeable on the actual bug. I'll do a whip finish. And again, with my dry flies, uh, I don't like to use any head cement simply because I don't like the added weight. But if you do a good whip finish or two, you should be all right. Fluff that out. And there you go. That is a pack of dub slow water cast. Thank you very much.